Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is Monday, October 7th, 2019, and I'm your host, Steve Petrowski with Reformation Nation. Today, I plan on bringing you a short read out of a book that I've been going through called The Gospel of Salvation by Alan Cairns. Yes, The Gospel of Salvation, which of course is full, free, and final. And in this, I plan on reading you and giving my own commentary, of course, in a short chapter which is entitled, What is the Spiritual Condition of Man by Nature? More or less, who am I? Who are you? Who are we in the eyes of God? But before we dive into this, let us come in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for who you are and what you continue to do. Thank you, O oh Lord, for allowing me to even breathe right now. Thank you. I realize that everything belongs to you, and I'm just a humble servant, a faithful ambassador, O oh Lord, as we all should be. I pray that this message will perhaps reach people all around the world. I pray for poor lost souls to come to repentance and faith alone in Jesus Christ, for you to plant the seeds and to bring the divine increase, O oh Lord. I pray for believers, your, your chosen people who are listening, to be equipped and encouraged by this message, O oh Lord. Yes, I know that this is a fallen world. Yes, Lord, and I realize the consequence of sin. But thank you for sending your one and only begotten Son to take away the sins of all who will believe, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. I pray for protection for myself and those that are listening from this world, of course, O oh Lord. Protect us from our carnal desires. Protect us, of course, from ourselves. Protect us from the evil one. Give us righteousness, O oh Lord. Continue to help us persevere in these end times. I thank you, O oh Lord. I give you the praise alone, O oh Lord. And I pray this in the matchless name of our King Jesus who is reigning forever and will continue to reign forever. Amen. What is the spiritual condition of man by nature? Basically, there are only two views of human nature. One is that though man isn't perfect, he is not too bad and he is perfectible without any intervention by God, which of course is not true. On the other hand, there is the biblical view that man is not only Man is not perfect, he is not only not perfect, but that he is left to himself beyond being made perfect. He is corrupt and he is depraved. Now before I move on, I want you to just perhaps come with an open mind. Realize that what's wrong with the world? All that we have to do is point and look at ourselves in the mirror and say it's us. Obviously there's a deeper understanding of this, but what's wrong with the world? We have a sin problem. So I, I encourage you to question perhaps your own values, question who you are, because sometimes you think that you are right. We all sometimes think that we're right, but we're actually wrong. The only person that is ever right is God. So I want to encourage you and just plant that seed before we move on when it comes to who we are and that we're not perfect and that we are corrupt and depraved. Anyway, how could people come to such total divergent views? The answer is the first view looks at man in relation to man and judges him by merely human standards. That's what we do. We judge ourselves according to human standards. The second view, that man is totally depraved, looks at man as he is related to God and as God describes him over against his own perfect holiness and his law. Now, if I compare myself to someone else, I may well be able to say, like the Pharisee, I thank God that I am not as other men are. I am better than this man is. But if that man is totally corrupt, what does it say about me? That I can in some way or some degree imagine myself a little better? At the end of the day, no man knows himself. No man knows any other man. The only one who really knows us is the Lord. He is our creator. And what does he say about human nature? Well, he says that we, are, we go astray from the womb speaking lies. You can find that in Psalm 58.3. He says that in the 51st Psalm that we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. 
The Lord Jesus says that out of our own heart flows the fullness of sin, wickedness, and corruption. The first chapter of Romans gives us a description of the Gentile world in the days of the Apostle Paul. The second chapter gives us a view of the Jewish world. And then in the third chapter of Romans, Paul brings it all together and says that God has found the whole world guilty. When you think of that and realize that the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. Think about it. We have to realize that. And we can only come back to one answer. Only God knows the heart. So what is the human condition? What is man's real moral and spiritual nature? According to God, it is a nature defiled, depraved, and corrupted by sin. Listen to how the Bible describes it in Ephesians chapter 2. Paul is writing to the people who had been delivered from this depravity by saving grace, but in grieving, I'm sorry, in giving this description, he shows that what they were before, before they were saved. He says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which of course is the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the, the children of disobedience. Now think, think of that. Dead, depraved, dominated by the devil, it is a dark, dark picture that, that the Bible paints of the human condition, of the state of human nature. That's the state. This is not saying that man cannot help his neighbor. It is not saying that man cannot be kind to other men. It is not saying that all men live equally immorally and equally wicked. The Bible is saying that no man is spiritually right with God and that no man can do anything to make himself acceptable to God. He is totally depraved. And only when a man sees that total depravity will he be moved to seek for God's answer. For God does have an answer to this dark and terrible condition that men by nature are in. Are you moved to seek for God's answer today by listening to this message? Well, before I conclude, I want to give a quote by R.C. Sproul. The fallenness that captures and grips our human nature affects our bodies. That's why we become ill and die. It affects our minds and our thinking. We still have the capacity to think, but the Bible says the mind has become darkened and weakened. The will of man is no longer in its pristine state of moral peril. Moral power. The will, according to the New Testament, is now in bondage. We are enslaved to the evil impulses and desires of our own hearts. The body, the mind, the will, the spirit, indeed, the whole person, have become infected by the power of sin. My friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes we are our own worst prison wardens. Think about it. But we can be set free. What is required for us to be conformed to the image of Christ? What is it? It is not simply some small adjustments or behavior modifications, but nothing less than the renovation from inside. We need to be regenerated, born again, to be, to be made over again, to be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the only way in which a person, right, the only way in which a person can escape this radical situation is by the Holy Ghost's changing, the changing of our core, of our very heart. And as R.C. Sproul says, however, even this change does not instantly vanquish sin. The complete elimination of sin awaits our glorification in heaven. Now, if you are saved, you are no longer under the power of sin, even though you still sin. You are a child of God. So that moves on to our next chapter, which I'll come to you tomorrow in. How can a depraved man be saved? Why would God want to save us, wicked people, who are by nature enemies of God? Well, I'm going to explain in this, and I do hope that this will give you hope tomorrow. And I hope that you will come to God in prayer and to realize that we are what's wrong with the world. Not that it should put you into any kind of anxious state or, or a form of depression, of course, but for you perhaps to be freed 
from the bondage of sin and to realize that I am a sinner in need of a Savior and to look towards the one who can free you from the prison of your own mind, but ultimately to free you from the wrath of our Almighty God that is building upon you, the wrath upon wrath. Yes, we are not saved simply because we make a decision for Christ. We are saved by grace through faith alone. We are ultimately saved from God. We are saved by God and we are saved for God. So as I'm going to reiterate again and again, pray and ask God to give you a new heart to replace that wicked heart of stone. I thank you so much. Tune in tomorrow. As I said, how can a man, a depraved man, be saved? Thank you very much for listening to Reformation Nation. I do hope that you could share this with others, and I pray that this message will encourage you. And of course, if you are unsaved, if you're still lost, I pray that this will be a seed plan, and I will pray for your salvation. Even if I don't know you, God does know you. He knows every hair on your head.